just want to thank God because it was through the ministry of the navigators that I was established in the faith. And one day in 1957, Dawson Trotman invited me to his home in Colorado Springs and asked me if I would like to go back to Kenya with a team that they were sending to work amongst those people in detention. I had been a Christian just one year, a bit more than one year. And I said, how can I go back to that country and preach the gospel when I was a typical settler? with all the racism, all the prejudices that I had inherited from my background. So how could I go back or come here as it was? So I went back to him and I said, I don't think I'm the right man you should send. He said, go up that canyon, this was at Glenarion, and cry to the Lord and ask him whether he is sending you. So I went up the canyon and I prayed to the Lord. I wasn't very good at praying. And I said, Lord, is this from you? I wanted myself to go back but I didn't think I could go back under those circumstances. And the Lord said, do you think I could change you? Do you think I can give you a new heart? Do you think that I could do the change that needs to take place in you? And I answered, yes, Lord, I do believe that. So I went back to Dawson and I said, yes, I'm coming, but I am very unqualified to come. He said, that's God's business. We're going to send you. You know the people, you've lived amongst those people. That is your home. This is where you're sending, I'm sending you. And there are thousands Yes, literally thousands of people in the detention camps who need to know the gospel that you know. And I will send you with that team and allow you to use your natural connections with the Kikuyu-speaking people. So the others came and they came in their aeroplane and they started the work and I came by sea to bring all the luggage. That was my job. <laughs> and I arrived at Mombasa. Oh, Mombasa, to be back. Yeah. And I got on that Gari Lamoshi. And it was like coming home. It was coming home. And I got to Nairobi station, and there was the NAF team standing on the platform with Dr. John Winkler who'd been with me the night I was converted. And I served there. But I then went home where my father was working on a coffee farm in Neri. I went home to see my parents again for the first time in five years, four years. And then I borrowed my, little, my younger brother's car to drive back to Nairobi because I, I had no money and I had no much opportunity of going. And I decided I'd go via, what do they call Thompson's Falls? <laughs> yes, I, I can never remember that name. So we went 
I went in this funny little car, it was a Morris Minor pickup, the kind that I think you don't see them on the road anymore. And I was driving near what that place is called. And there was a man standing on the roadside wanting a lift. So I stopped and he did. He jumped in the back of this pickup. You know, they do used to in those days. You didn't drive, get in with a European in the front. You got in the back. And I just about sat off. And that voice said to me, Robert, that's not the way we do it in the kingdom. So I stopped and I said, come, please, come, come to the front here with me. And I had not learned any Christian vocabulary in Kiswahili. I only knew boy, letter gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> so we set off and I said, Lord, what am I going to say to this guy? You've sent me back here. I prayed that you would send me back and equip me to work amongst people in, there in Kenya. So we started talking and I discovered I, that I could communicate with him heart to heart. Across all those boundaries, all those prejudices. And when we got to Nabasha, where he was going, I realized that he had only one leg and I hadn't really noticed it. So we stopped on the roadside in Nagasha and we thanked God together. He said, I love Jesus also. That was such a gift from the Lord and that was the confirmation that he had given me up that canyon in Colorado Springs a year or two before. Listen, God is in the business of changing people. Only God can change our hearts. Only God can change our habit, habit forms. And I thank God it was the navs that taught me to learn scripture. What was that that you said about how many verses? I went on from the topical memory system and I went on and on and on memorizing scripture. And I thank God I memorized those scriptures. Because they are still flowing out from my inner heart. Because they're the gift of God, the word of God. Brothers and sisters, you come from the same stock as I do with the nerves. Thank God for them. But let's not just say navigate, navigate, navigate. Let's do what they said. I came to the Lord when I was a student and somebody looked after me for a whole year. They didn't know about the navigators, but they did the work for me. And I decided I wanted to serve God overseas. I ended up here in... Um, the Community Development for Women, Mandalayo Yawanawake, right. Uh, and in the, I went to Kisi and then I came here to teach at Jean's School uh, in Kabeti. And then at that time I started to worship in the cathedral and be in the youth fellowship. And there were some lovely young men there and finally, the Lord brought us together. Robert was serving in the cathedral too, in the, with the navigators. So when I came to Kenya, I did not think I would ever meet a husband here. But the Lord had a husband for me here. <laughs> so that was, that was lovely. So I was introduced through the navigators through my husband and we went together for training to uh, the States. And that is when I learned the Navigator's Principle. I also had to learn the TMS. 
<laughs> and uh, with the authorised version of the Bible, very difficult. Anyway, it got me learning scripture too, and above all, it taught me the value of mentoring another person. And for me, for all my life, it has had been women. I, I knew the Navigator wives here, I loved them, I did a little bit of teaching, we had fellowship together, um, but really it was when I went back to England and Robert became a pastor in a church and then that is when all my life now I have been the wife of a pastor, no pay, but, <laughs> but doing the work that I loved and I, I could not imagine a better life than I have had with a church of people, with women who I was able to meet with and enjoy and learn from and grow together and small groups for Bible study. All the time small groups for Bible study. So he introduced me um, to the Navigator ministry and gave me a ministry in the church myself for which I am very thankful. When we move to the place we live now, there's a big church there and I thought, oh good Lord, now I can go to sleep. Now I can relax. No, there's more ministry. It doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter how old you are. Always you grow. Always you have to learn new things and meet new people and love new people and do what the Lord has given you the gifts to do. Thank you. Yeah, praise the Lord.